It was the end of my second year and I was ready to have a fantastic vacation. Everything was booked, everything was ready. But then all of a sudden, it got derailed. And I knew that I wanted to go into medical school and I dreaded this moment because I knew I had to do the MCAT one day and I knew that I would end up ruining one of my summers anyway. So I thought, why not do it at the end of my second year? But I was very scared, very terrified, just because I didn't know how to study. I didn't have any organic chemistry, I didn't have any biochemistry, and I didn't have any psychology. That made the planning a bit difficult to begin with. And I talk about resources I use in a separate video that I'll be uploading in the future as well. But today, I'm gonna to show you guys my study plan, what I use to get a 518 on the MCAT, and I'm gonna show you how you can create your own study plan and really go about it because the MCAT really is a piece of cake. All right, so this is a three and a half month study plan. And this was all because I didn't have those prerequisites, as I mentioned, I didn't have organic chemistry, biochemistry, or psychology. So it was a bit of a doozy, to be honest. I didn't know what I was doing. But the first month to month and a half is just content review. And content review is the most important part, in my opinion. You'll see a lot of people talking about, oh, uh, you know, I can't improve my score no matter what I do. I've been trying, I've been getting 505s, I've been practicing so much. But the answer always comes back to you need to spend more time on the content before you all of a sudden jump into practice questions, okay? So the first thing you want to do is content, content, content. It's the key, it's the content that gets you to the final stage, okay? So what do I mean? So really, depending on the resource you, you do, you want to review all the different content that's tested by the MCAT. So that's physics, chemistry, organic chemistry, um, biochemistry, biology, psychology, and sociology. And CARS is also in there as well. So in a typical week, and this is what my typical week was, depending on the resource you use, I use Kaplan, but I'll talk more about that in a separate video, as I mentioned. I use Kaplan. What I would do is on Monday, I would study only the memorization topics that needed memorizing. So this was my biology. This was my biochemistry. This was my psychology. I would keep a day strictly for those guys and then spend that day studying a specific number of chapters. So in each Kaplan book, there's a certain number of chapters. Let's say it's 15, for example. Take that number divided by the number of days you're going to be doing content review, and that'll be how many days you need to finish the book. I don't believe in having strict number of hours per day that you need to study. I think that that just puts limits that are pointless. You're only productive for only a certain amount of days, so spend that time well and have a set number of chapters that you should finish so you're on track with your content review. And if you slow down, that's okay. I slowed down. I thought I was gonna finish content review in one month. I finished it in a month and a half because I knew I needed more time before I jumped into practice questions. So your first day is one specific chapter of certain topics. The next day, you then, and your organic chemistry. I did the more applied topics. So this was physics, your chemistry. And in this day, I would do a bit of memorizing, but I would also do some practice questions that were in the Kaplan books, because for those topics, it's more about learning to apply the concept that you're learning, not so much memorizing. In the second day though, I would review the material I learned from yesterday. It's all about spaced repetition. So you're not just reviewing, so you're not just learning new material every day. You're learning new material, but you're also reviewing the previous day's material. So what I would do is Monday, you got your memorization topics, memorize those. Next day, you have your apply topics, do those, but then also now review what you learned yesterday, and then you rinse and repeat for the week. And in this week, you always wanna have one day where you're taking a break because to be honest, guys, it's such a long, time, right? Three, four months, depending on how much time you're spending. So you have to be efficient. You have to not burn out. And that's one of the ways. 
And the next thing you do for me personally is that on the weekend, one of the days I would be off, or maybe it was a Friday, but I would spend the weekend for sure reviewing all the material I learned. And it's very important that you do that, that, that you're not just trying to learn new things because at the end of the day, you want efficient learning, you want spaced repetition so you remember all the content at the end of the content review because there's nothing worse than doing content review and not remembering any of it. So end of the week, review everything you learned and then once you've reviewed everything and you're confident, you start the next week off anew and doing the same thing, rinse and repeat for a month to a month and a half. That's how I did it, and I had lots of success with that. And one more thing, guys, you don't have to waste your time doing a practice exam. I know a lot of people just do exam out of nowhere just to see where they're at. That's just a waste of a test, and it's not gonna tell you anything because you're not gonna be reviewing the test anyways. At least, that, that's how it was for me. So that's month one to month one to month one to month and a half. It's not hard, guys. You have to make your own study plan, see what you're confident but spend as much time as you need on the content. One thing I'll mention that I forgot to mention is that during this whole week, you should always be doing cars every single day. In fact, I suggest starting cars a year before you actually do the MCAT or when you're planning to do the MCAT. That's how important it is. Because cars, for me personally, like some people, you know, they'll just go on the test and get a 132. I wasn't like that. I started off with a 125. It's difficult for some of us and it's difficult to really get in that mindset. And the only way you can do that is start early. Start doing practice passages early. Um, maybe once every once a week, for example, a year before. And I'll talk about that in the resources section. But definitely do cars every single day. And at the end of the week for cars, review all the passages that you did. But you're also gonna be reviewing the passages every day that you're doing them. So that's content review. All right, this is month 1.5. For me anyways, it was one and a half months in. Now what do you do? So this is a very difficult month, especially if you haven't subscribed to this channel. So make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and hit those notifications. But getting back to it, it's, it's a difficult month because you're now applying all the content that you learned. So I'm gonna give you my sample week and what it, what it looked like. So on the weekends, every weekend now, you're starting to do practice exams. So I used Kaplan practice exams for this. So for a month, what you're gonna do is four practice exams. That's what I did. So your first practice exam is gonna start on the weekend. On the Saturday, you're gonna wake up the exact same time that you're gonna wake up for the MCAT because you want it to be the same schedule and that's very important. So for me, I think I was waking up either six or 7 a.m. in the morning and starting my practice test and doing it and then calling a day after I was done. You're not gonna review anything that day. Then on the Sunday, once you've done everything, on the Sunday, you're now gonna review the test that you just did and figure out what was wrong, what content were you missing, and what was your score. And ladies and gentlemen, please pay attention to this score in terms of the content. I found that when I was doing these tests, a 500 meant I knew the content pretty well. I knew it okay, actually, but a 507, 508 meant that content was down and I didn't need to do content anymore. That's what my philosophy was and it turned out to be pretty good. So make sure that you're getting a baseline now of you've studied the content. What is your first test looking like in terms of scores and track it. See, make sure that you're improving in terms of the content and look at where you're lacking. Where are you missing knowledge so you can actually go back and review it. So that was just the weekend. But what about the rest of the week? So this is also very important. So the rest of the week, you're doing practice questions. The rest of the week, you're doing practice questions. And it's not over. You're doing practice questions, but you're still reviewing the content. Now you don't have to learn any of the information. You're just going back into your books and you're flipping through and you're reviewing the things that you think you don't really remember. 
and you're reviewing the content that you're lacking when it comes to those specific questions that you're doing. So what it would look like is similar to before, you do questions specific to the day. So for me, all my memorizing topics, so that was my biology, my biochemistry, and of course, psychology. I would do practice questions for all of those on one day, review those questions the same day. Obviously you're interspersing cars in all of this, just like I said. And then the second day, you're doing the other topics, reviewing them and going through your content review. And the third day you rinse and repeat and go from there. And I want to make this clear. If you actually want to improve your score while you're doing this, you need to write notes, make flashcards, somehow memorize the things that you're getting wrong because that's the content that you're lacking. It's pointless just to do practice questions, not read any of it and pretend like your score is going to go up just because you're doing practice questions. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. So this month is very key. You need to be seeing a steady improvement in the questions that you're getting right on the full length exams that you're practicing on the weekends, but also slowly in the practice question that you're doing. So I was personally using UWorld, but I'll get into more of that again in the resources section for practice questions. So basically make sure the score is going up. If it's not going up, look at what's causing it to not go up. Is it the content or is it the practice test itself? And what I mean by that is that eventually you'll plateau. For me, I went from 500 on the full length for Kaplan when I first started after content review and it went all the way up to 507, 508, nothing higher. And I realized, okay, I've hit my plateau. I know I feel confident that I've already learned all the content at this point. So what I'm going to do now is move on. And if you feel that way, then you should. Again, this is a very individualized process, a very personal process that you have to know yourself, know how you study, but this is just my way of going about it. So that is month 1.5 for me. And that lasted about a month for me. So that would be month 2.5. If it's a three month plan, this would be month two finished and you would be entering into month three. For me, again, this was month two and a half. So for the last month or month and a half, what are you doing? This is very important, so pay attention. The last month to a month and a half, you're no longer using any of your Kaplan. You're no longer using any of your UWorld. This is strictly when you're using the official AAMC material. This is their full lengths. This is their um, section banks, and this is their question banks. That's all you're using, especially for cars. For cars, you want to now transition over to their question banks because they're much more accurate in terms of what you're actually going to be tested on. And a similar prompt or scenario is happening similar to last month. Now, instead of doing Kaplan or whatever exam you were using, you're going to be using the AAMC full lengths on the weekends. That was me. So Saturday, do one full length Sunday, review that. And this time you want to review it very, very closely because the way they test you and the way they word questions is so different compared to the different material that if you get the style down, the way that they word questions and they, the way that they ask questions and the way the answers that they're looking for, you'll be able to actually game the exam and get a much higher score because it's no longer about content. Content will get you 70% of the way there. If you want to get a very high score, 95th percentile, 100th percentile, you need to get into the minds of those guys who wrote this, this exam. So that's a very important part of it. So, same thing, Saturday, Sunday, full lengths. What are you doing during the week? You're doing section banks. You're also doing question banks during the week. And this can be up to you how you did it. Again, same thing for me. Monday, I did the, my memorizations. Tuesday, I did my uh, physics or go with, uh, other chemistry stuff. Um, and then I reviewed content that I was missing in between. And that's how it happened. Pretty much rinse and repeat. Uh, until the month was over and we approached my exam. One thing I want to mention though, is that in my last month, I realized 
I was, I wanted to do one full pass of content one last time. And how I did this was I quickly went through my notes. And the good thing about Kaplan specifically is that it has bullet point summaries of each of the chapters. So what I did was I quickly went through all of those, made flashcards of all of them and quickly did all the flashcards in about a week as I was doing all of this. And that really helped the content solidify before my final one. And the last thing I want to mention, uh, especially for this, it's, it's very key. A couple of days before your exam date, you want to slow down. But you want to keep doing cars at the same rate you've always been doing. But you want to slow down. And the reason I say this is because you need to be very relaxed. You can't be studying, you can't be stressing out days before the exam. So be confident in the things that you study. Take it slow, take it well, relax. And the day before you do not study, you do not. Do not study or I can guarantee that it will bring your mark down. You want to be relaxed. And on the day of, I wish you luck, my friends, because it's a beast of an exam, but it's not too difficult. If you spend the time, if you do it well, do it right, I'm sure you'll get a fantastic score. So, I hope you learned something. I'm gonna make a resources video, so look for that, and definitely subscribe to see more helpful videos. Thanks so much, I'll see you in the next one.